This is the Fire TV from Amazon. This is the Fire TV stick from Amazon. Today we're gonna to take a look at what you get with this stick and if it's the right value for you, even getting both of them for a two TV experience. Next on Geek Smack Review. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine, Think Magazine, put in a geek, you've got Geekazine, and we're of course, we're gonna review the Amazon Fire st Stick and of course the Fire TV. But first of all, I wanna let you know, Twitter handle is Geekazine, email is geekazine at gmail.com. If you'd like to email me, suggest a topic, maybe you got a product that you want me to review, like the Amazon TV Fire Stick, just let me know. You know, earlier this year, Amazon announced and put out the Fire TV, the competitor to Roku and Apple TV. Doubling the specs of both devices, this became my go-to choice for over-the-top television. Now Amazon has come out with their lower cost version in the Fire TV stick, mostly to compete with Chromecast and Roku stick. This $40 device plugs right into your HDMI port in the TV with a combined power USB cable, which, well, of course, depending on your TV, can be powered right through the USB port inside the TV for a cord-free television experience. Now, before we accelerate on the subject, keep in mind you do not need an Amazon Prime subscription to own or use Fire TV, or the TV stick for that matter. It does enhance the experience with more content. You can easily run Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, and other apps on Fire TV but I invite you to try the Prime service, which matches a lot of content that services like Netflix does have. The Fire TV Sticks is a dual core processor with one gigabyte of memory and eight gigabytes of flash storage. While there's no place to add memory to the device, the Amazon Cloud Storage should take, you, should take over to hold your information, and you can get five gigabytes for free. The Fire, Fire TV is a little bit more powerful. It has a quad-core processor and two gigabytes of RAM inside. It also has Ethernet and a hard for a hardwire connection, optical audio, and USB connection for an entertainment center. Both have dual-band, dual-antenna Wi-Fi, so if you have a home Wi-Fi and, and a decent router, you can watch movies in 1080p while surfing and playing games easily. Both come with a remote control, although the Fire TV stick does not have the voice features on its remote that the Fire TV does. It doesn't mean you cannot use the voice commands or purchase a Fire TV voice remote to pair with your stick. Also, if you download the Fire TV app for iOS or Android, you can easily speak into the phone to find the shows and movies through the major library. You can also pair multiple Fire TVs if you purchased uh, one for the living room and one for the bedroom. And both Fire TV and Fire TV Stick are set up for games. Now, if you purchase the Amazon Fire Game Controller, you can get and connect the stick up for gameplay up to seven controllers. Of course, the Fire TV might be the better choice for certain games because, of course, the processor and memory inside. Nonetheless, I was able to play a rousing game of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Fire TV stick without a problem. I could also play the game with, uh, with the remote, which is a little bit more difficult to do, but very possible. Now that we've gone over the differences between the Fire TV and the TV stick, I'm going to take a look at all the pros and cons to both and of course we'll also compare them to the Apple TV, the Roku, and Chromecast, and the Nexus Player. We'll do that next. So the Fire TV Stick is slightly less powerful version of the Fire TV, but can it keep up with its big brother, and is it worth the price? Let's survey the cons of the Fire TV and the Fire TV Stick. First of all, and what I feel is the most important issue, is the home screen interface within. If you used a Roku or Apple TV, everything was set in apps. This makes for an easy to find interface to go to where you need to go. Fire TV interface is not as great. You can't set up your display to having one icon over here, one icon over here. Therefore, if you haven't used an app such as Netflix in a while, you might get buried in the list by movies, TV shows, and games that you've watched and played. The visual search for movies and TV shows from the home screen are also a little bit harder on Amazon than, uh, we'll say, Roku. Most of the time I use the website to try and find content to watch. 
The voice feature is nice if you know what you're looking for from Amazon. However, the voice feature will not search movies or TV shows within those apps such as Netflix, like the Roku does. The Fire TV Stick also has some communication problems and, and latency problems with the remote. I found that sometimes I had to press the button again time to time. I replaced the batteries just to make sure uh, that was not the issue. However, it did have still have some latency. The application for your phone also has a little bit of latency on the navigation. Compared to the Roku and their app remote, lot better response time on the Roku. Speaking of which, let's compare the other set-top boxes out there. First of all, let's talk about Chromecast, and of course, the, it's supposed to be competition to this. Personally, I wouldn't even bother comparing the Chromecast until a newer version ever comes out. The response time of that single core processor box and single band antenna just couldn't keep up with 1080p movies and TV shows. As for Apple TV, it does better than Chromecast, but the box works best if you have it connected to an Ethernet cable. The biggest downfall to the Apple TV is the lack of new apps and content outside of iTunes uh, that you could get for it. The Roku is the best competitor to the Fire TV. The Roku 3 has a dual core processor and only 512 megabytes of memory. Their Roku stick is single core and also has 512, but has the dual band Wi-Fi, what's known as MIMO, so movies can be streamed in 1080p. Roku has also got a great interface and more apps than Fire TV, as well as can run Amazon Prime as an app itself. Fire TV does excel in gameplay over Roku with the game controller and higher graphics content. And as for the Nexus player, the specs match closest to the Fire TV and also offers the voice control and gameplay. In all, the Fire TV and Fire TV Stick are the perfect combination for two or more TV needs. Maybe one for the living room, one for the bedroom. The price is right for both. This is all under $200, matching a couple months of DISH or Direct TV satellite service. Add in the Prime Video option and you can get a lot of content delivered to your home, enough to even cut your cable or satellite bill. So what do you use to watch your favorite movies or your favorite TV shows? What do you like or dislike about those services? Would you buy two devices, one for your living room, one for your bedroom, maybe the kitchen or the basement or something like that, to get your content? Let me know by tweeting me over at Geekazine, Think Magazine and uh, put in a geek, or geekazine at gmail.com. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. If you've got something that you want me to take a look at, just email me and we'll queue it up for another Geek Smack review. Until next time, you guys geek out and take care.